Hey, welcome to another activity for our PHP 2 class. In this activity, we're going to demonstrate the need for atomic transactions using the idea of ACID in our uh, database design. So you might remember in an atomic transaction, we want to have the entire transaction either succeed or roll back and fail. So we'll demonstrate here an application that is simply adding and subtracting from two accounts. So I have an account here that I can start with $1,000 and the savings account is $2,000 and you can see the transaction says take a thousand or I'm sorry take a hundred out of one account and put it in the other. So every time I run this script the accounts uh, change by $100. Now that works great but you can see that if half of the transaction works and half of the transaction fails we would have a major problem. So we're going to demonstrate that with some coding here and then we'll fix the problem later. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is set up a database. So I'm going to my MyPHP admin tools and let's create a new database and let's call it uh, Banking, how about? Banking Demo is a good name for it. Inside of here we're going to create two tables. So I'm going to choose Checking is 1 and it only needs two columns. And the first column is the ID number and let's make that ID number the primary key and make it auto increment and click go. The second column is going to be called the balance so let's put in there a float value and click save. Now we'll do the same thing we have a checking account we're going to do identical with savings so we'll create a savings account and use the ID number as the first column and let's set it to auto increment. So for the second column we're going to call it balance again and float. So now we have two tables checking and savings. Let's go put in a, an initial value for each of them. So in the checking account you see I have no rows. Let's insert a row and have it as a thousand dollars. So if we browse to it we see row number one with a thousand. So our checking account is a thousand. Let's make the savings at two thousand. Okay, so we're set up and ready to go. We have some values in our uh, databases. You can see I have a, a project folder called uh, Topic 6-1 Video. And I've already set up two files here. I have the autoloader file, file, which is from previous projects, and the database connector, which is giving us the login name and password. So we have uh, ourselves, so we got ourselves a, a connection. All right, so now the, the first thing I want to do is create some uh, operations on these accounts. So let's create a new file and so let's call this thing our check account data service. We're going to create a class here and then put two methods on it. So first of all, we're going to use the autoloader so we can get any classes that might be called. So let's create the class and we'll call it check account data service. We're going to make two functions, one called get balance and the other called update balance. So the update balance will allow us to modify the balance and the update or the get balance will just simply return a value. So the first thing in this uh, function is to get a connection to our database. The next few lines are going to actually select uh, the value from balance and run the query. So let's check an if statement out. We'll see if there are any rows that were selected. If there are not, then we'll return a negative one as a failure. However, if a row was selected, let's get the value from that row for the column called balance, uh, close the connection, and then return the balance as the uh, return value for this function. And so that's the get balance. Now I'm going to create another file called tester that will see if this actually works. So inside tester, we're going to require the autoloader first. Then let's create an object for the checking account data service 
and then we'll call the method for get balance and save it to the balance variable. Then we'll print it to see if we can see it on the screen. Let's go check it out to see if it actually works. So I'm going into my browser here and running tester. And sure enough, it sure look, looks like it works. We have initial balance of 1,000. And if I were to look in my database in the checking account, I had set that value to $1,000. So it's reading it properly. Let's return and now we'll, up, we'll do the update balance command here. So we can probably copy and paste our code. So instead of selecting, we're going to delete this and change it to update. So we've got ourselves an update command. Now for the uh, return statements, a few modifications as well. So we're going to reverse the order here. So if the result comes back as any positive number, then we know that it worked. And so then the update is successful. And we'll return a 1. Otherwise, we will return a 0. And we should make a close connection as well. Okay, so now we have an update balance. Let's see if we can test it out. So after we do the initial balance, let's add some money. Okay, so we have the update command, and now we can put in a new value. So I could use the word balance here, and let's add $9,999, and then print it again. So let's take these lines here and copy them down. So we should see an increase in our balance. Okay, so this looks like uh, the checking account's working. I'm going to duplicate this uh, object and we'll just make it very similar for the savings account. So I will name it as saving account data service. Let's go ahead and open that file. And then we'll just make a few modifications here. So select balance from savings instead of checking. And then the same thing at the bottom where we do an update balance. Okay, so we've made the changes here. And so as well, up at the top here, we have to change the name here from check account to saving account. And let's save that. Okay, let's go back into the tester now. Okay, so now we know all this works. I'm going to delete most of the stuff and recreate the account so that way we have a, a, a valid test from transferring one to the other. So we'll start off with the uh, checking and then we're going to have another variable called saving and we'll make that a new account called savings balance data services. There we have it. So let's set two variables, one called check balance, another one called saving balance, and we will get the values from the database. All right, the next thing we need to do is print out those current balances so that the user can see what they are on the screen. All right, now I'm going to echo out my intentions. I'm going to take $100 from the checking and put it into savings. So this transaction will update the balance for the checking account by subtracting 100 and it will update the savings account by adding 100. Next, I'm going to repeat the process and show the current balance for both accounts. Let's go back into the database and reset the values so that our accounts are back to their starting values of $1,000 and $2,000. Okay, so the account balances are reset so now let's refresh our page, and we show that $1,000 was our initial balance for checking, and it has dropped to 900. So if we keep doing this, you can see that the balance stays equal. So we have a total of $3,000 between our two accounts. So far, so good. Now, this is an example of two um, transactions that should be done simultaneously. If one of them were to fail, we would have a financial error. So let's come into here and make it fail. Now there are various reasons why a transaction could fail. I could type some code wrong or there could be an interruption in the network traffic. It would be easiest to test out the bad coding procedure. So let's say 
the update balance procedure for some reason doesn't get work doesn't work properly I come in here and do a typo so I put in a letter X into this uh, statement here and save it now if I refresh my page you can see that the uh, savings balance is at 2500 and it didn't go up I keep pushing this button it subtracts money from my checking account but never seems to make it to the savings account and so we're costing our customer money every time we run the transaction so he has far less than twenty five hundred dollars now he's down to almost uh, two thousand so that's not a good way to run things so in the next video we're going to turn these transactions into a single atomic unit that cannot be broken down and so if one of them fails then both transactions fail